All right, we've got a 10 watt, 20 watt, and 40 watt diode laser here. These are the most common power levels for a modern diode laser. And if you're in the market looking to get a new one, then one of the very first questions you're gonna ask yourself about these things is, well, how much power should I get? And as soon as you start researching this topic, you'll quickly find three main differences that people will talk about when it comes to these various power levels. The very first thing you'll notice is, of course, the price difference between them. The 10 watt module here, the cheapest kit available from Xtool retails for about $580. The cheapest kit for the 20 watt here that you can get from Xtool retails for about $1,200. And then going up to this 40 watt, it actually comes only in a kit right now at the time of recording with both a 40 watt and a 10 watt bundled together, interestingly, but that retails for about $1,880 at the time of recording. And obviously, if you're shopping different brands of diode lasers, then this can vary a little bit, but I thought it would be a good comparison just to look at only X tool here so that we can kind of do a bit of an apples to apples comparison. Second, people will say that as you go up the power scale from 10 watt, 20 watt to 40 watt, that you'll be able to engrave and cut faster, which makes sense because as you have more more power, you need less exposure time to the laser to complete that engraver cut you would need. So that seems fairly logical. But then on the other hand, the third thing that you'll probably see is that with a lower power diode laser like this 10 watt over here, it actually has a smaller dot size. And that means, at least in theory, you'll be able to do finer detail engravings for things like photo engraving. But as somebody who's been running this 20 watt laser module here in the middle for about a year now, I've often wondered how much difference it really makes when you go up to the 40 watt module or down to a 10 watt. So today we're going to take all three of these laser modules and run the following three tests on them to see how different they really are. The first test is a cut test and this will help us to see with the more powerful lasers how much faster they're able to go and if they're able to maintain the same level of cut quality. The second test is an engraved test which will also help us to compare for each of these power levels the differences in speed and quality. And finally we'll do a photo engraving test to see if the difference in dot size actually makes a noticeable difference and if it does to what extent. And after completing each test with all three laser modules. I'll take a little break in the video to compare the results so we can hopefully gain some insight in it. And then at the very end of the video, we're gonna be putting everything together to hopefully help you, if you're shopping for a laser like this, decide which one's going to work best for you. We'll begin with the cut test and we're going to start with the 10 watt laser module here and then we'll work our way up. For today's experiments, I'm going to be using one quarter inch maple plywood. Obviously, this is a little bit of a limitation because we're only testing on one material and that's something different like acrylic or slate, but I felt that it was important to use just one material across the board just to give us a bit of a baseline to work with here. And by the way, as we run through these tests, you might notice that the 10 watt and the 40 watt laser modules here look brand new, and that's because they are. Xtool actually sent these to me for free so that I could film this video, and so a big thank you to Xtool for making today's experiments possible. And here we go. These are the results for the 10 watt module, but of course we'll come back once we finished it for the other modules and compare them side by side. Now we're on to the 20 watt module here. We're just going to take a brief look at this, and then we'll go ahead and move on to the next module. And next up we have the 40 watt module here. Again, we'll just take a brief look and then we'll move on. All right, here we have all of the tests and there's a lot we can think take away from these different tests here as we look at them, but there are three main things that I wanna draw your attention to. So the first thing I wanna do is just compare the 10 and 20 watt uh, test cards here. And what you'll see if you, you look at these is you'll see that the difference between the 10 watt on the left and the 20 watt on the right is actually not that big. And I think one of the reasons for that is that the 20 watt module I've already used heavily and the 10 watt module is brand new. And so I think if you're doing this with a brand new 20 watt, you probably would get a little bit better performance. Uh, but with that said, I, I'm counting about four additional cutouts on the, on the right for the 20 watt. And so you are gonna get a bit more speed. So that's the first thing I wanted to call out. But now let's compare a brand new module to a brand new module and do the 10 watt and the 40 watt. And so there's two things I wanna call your attention to here. So the first is that obviously you get a lot more speed here on the right with the 40 watt because there's just, just look at how many more stars are cut out. And uh, to be clear, if I didn't already mention this, on the right you have the speed and on the bottom you have the power and there's a line in the middle. On the left it's one pass, on the right it's two passes. And so, and it's the same for, for each one of course and so we can kind of compare that. And I think a good comparison is to take the fastest one pass cut on the 10 watt which is this one here. So that's running at 300 millimeters per minute and compare it with what we can do on the 40 watt. And so the fastest one pass cut is here and that's 600. And so that is, uh, that is double. <laughs> that's, that's twice as fast on the 40 watt as on the, on the 10 watt. And so that's good to know. But the other thing you'll notice here is that you get a lot more scorching. You can kind of see these scorch marks on the wood with the 40 watt 
compared to the 10 watt, which overall, it has a little bit of scorching on some of the corners, um, but overall, a lot of these cuts look really clean in comparison. And so that's another thing that I think is worth calling out. But we'll talk more about this stuff later. So for now, let's go ahead and move on to the engrave test. We'll again start with the 10 watt module here. And I know a lot of my viewers are also on my email list. So I just wanted to quickly mention for you guys that you may notice that this test grid actually looks a little bit different than my original public file. And that's because we've updated it to this 2.0 version, if you will, that you see here that incorporates some of the feedback that we've gotten from you, including a solution to the font compatibility issue that some people have run into. And we've also changed the power and speed ratings in order to make this work better across the 10 watt, 20 watt, and 40 watt modules, rather than just focusing mainly on the 20 watt module that this was originally designed on. Just keep in mind that these tests are still calibrated for one quarter inch plywood like I'm using here. And so if you were doing something really different, like one eighth inch acrylic, for example, then you would almost definitely want to update these settings before you actually run it on your laser. This file is really just meant to serve as a start point for your material tests. Anyway, I just sent out this updated file to everyone on the email list yesterday, so you should have this in your inbox now. And definitely feel free to leave me a comment if you have any issues with this file, and maybe we can make some more improvements if we end up making a version three of the file. All right, and here we have all three engraved tests. And you'll notice on my, my template here for the engraved test, it has a text test. Um, but we're gonna basically just ignore that. What we mainly want to look at is this engraved portion over here, which has the speed on the right and the power setting on the bottom. So now I have my, my 10 watt, I got the 20 watt here, and I've got the 40 watt here as well. You'll notice that I've also written no air on that, and that's because for these engraved tests, I used no air assist for all of them. In my experience, an engraving looks a bit better when you don't use the air assist, but some people will differ in opinion on that, but I, I just thought I'd mention it. So let's go ahead and compare these. So the first thing, is um, I think a good way of comparing these is just to look at, okay, what is the, the darkest engraving that we get here on this test card for the 10 watt? And it's of course this uh, slowest speed, highest power, the 10K 100. And then what I'm gonna try to do, and this is a little bit uh, subjective, a little bit difficult to perfectly compare, but I'm gonna see on the other test cards where I get, at what speed I get a similar engrave. And so I've already looked at this a little bit, and I think for the 20 watt, it's somewhere around here, which is 100% power and 14K. And so in that situation, if that's the engrave that you wanted, then you would be getting about 40% more speed, right? And then if we go to the, the 40, uh, the 40 watt module here, then I went all the way up to 90 at 18K. And so if I extended this, TED grid, uh, this test grid up to higher speeds, you might be able to get that similar engrave as from the 10 watt. Um, all the way up at like 19 or 20K. But, but for what I have here, I know at least I can get it at 18K. So worst case scenario, we can go 80% faster. And it is worth mentioning, I think, that you're not gonna get to 40, uh, four times higher speed, right? Like going from a 10 watt to a 40 watt, maybe you would think, hey, I could do five times faster, but that's really not the case because the D1 Pro maxes out at, I believe, 24K for uh, the speed in millimeters per, per minute. And so you're never gonna be able to get to four times uh, 10,000. That's just a limitation of the, the frame itself. And so you're not gonna get up that high, but it is possible I think you could get at least 80% faster on the 40 watt compared to the 10 watt and potentially even all the way up to double uh, the speed on the 40 watt when compared to the 10 watt. One other thing I'll briefly mention is that you, you might also notice, it's, it's probably a little bit difficult to tell here, but on the, the 10 watt compared to the, the 40 watt, the 40 watt one I selected here, even though the, the darkness is similar, the indentation from the engraving is a little bit deeper on the 40 watt versus the 10 watt. And so that's also, I think, worth calling out. All right, I feel like these two tests that we've done so far are giving us a pretty good idea of how these modules differ on speed, but now let's look at dot size by doing our photo engrave test. And as we get started with this, I need to make a little bit of a disclaimer. Photo engraving is pretty complicated, and there is a lot about it that I personally do not know, and I know for a fact that if you dial the settings and really spend time with them and tweak them, that you can make photo engravings look better if you really get those settings well done. As a result, it's actually quite difficult to design an experiment that will conclude exclusively and fairly compare different power levels for something like photo engraving. So with that said, what we're going to do today is run a photo grid on each of these laser modules, and we're going to be using a fixed DPI of 240, a gamma of two, we're gonna be using dither, and then we're going to, on our grid, have different power and speeds. Then after we've engraved our test grid with each of our laser modules, what we're going to do is select the best looking 
intersection of power and speed, and then we're going to use those settings for a larger photo engrave. And we're going to do that larger photo engrave all on one piece of wood to hopefully give a really good side-by-side -side comparison of how each of these laser modules photo engrave side by side. Now, as I've already alluded to, this won't really be a perfect scientific test, but I hope that it will still be a useful example to start to see a little bit of how much difference this dot size between laser modules makes. All right, and here we have the photo engrave test grid here for each of the different uh, module sizes. And let's start with the 10 watts. So what I did here again is I have the, the power on the left and I have the speed on the bottom. I did all of these with dither and a fixed DPI of 240 and a gamma of two. And so I looked at this grid and I thought, okay, the best power and speed combination uh, was this one, 3000 speed and 20% power. And so we would use that for our big photo comparison later. And then for the 20 watt, I thought that the best one was around here, the 20% the 4000 intersection. And then uh, over here for the 40 watt, I thought that it was uh, 4,000 and 15%. So again, this is a little bit difficult to compare because it's going to be a different power and speed, of course, because it is a different powered module. Um, but the selection of which box is the best is also a bit subjective because I'm just kind of eyeballing it here, <laughs> part of the pun. So the next step of this comparison was to do each of these uh, engravings on a larger photo. And I've actually done that all on one piece of wood so that we can see with those power and speed sets settings that we selected for each module, how it compares. And so it is not perfect. You can see that the, the 40 watt one is a little bit darker. Maybe I would want it a little bit of a, a lighter setting, but I think this gives us a, an interesting comparison to see the level of detail in each one. So we have the, the 10 watt, the 20 watt, and the 40 watt over here. And I am pretty confident that we could dial these in. I kind of tried to play around with it. Um, on the side to see if I can get the 40 watt better. And I think we could make the 40 watt and the 20 watt both look a bit better than this if we really learned and got better and experimented with the settings. Um, but I think what we can say about this is in this specific experiment, the 10 watt looks a lot more detailed. Like I'm gonna try to get as close to this on the camera. I'm sure it's hard to, to see, but I, especially if you look like around the nose and around the eyes, like the shading just looks a lot more detailed. And uh, the 20 watt and the 40 watt, like if you looked at these in isolation, you would still think like, hey, that's that's pretty cool. I did I did a photo engraving on a piece of wood. And so it's still cool that you can do that. And it looks pretty decent, I think, both on the, the 20 watt and the 40 watt. But I think if you just look at the 10 watt, man, it just looks so much better in my opinion. And you could say that, hey, you know, we just kind of got lucky with the 10 watt settings. And if we got something that was optimized better for the 40 watt, well then maybe, you know, maybe we would get better results for the 40 watt and the other two wouldn't look as good. Maybe you could make that argument. Um, but to me, I think my response to that would be, well, it just seems easier on a 10 watt to get good results like this. And so this is kind of how it looks like. You can evaluate, look at these photos and see for yourself, see what you think. But those are my thoughts overall. All right, now that we've done all of this testing, let's come back here and talk about who I think each of these modules will actually work best for. Let's start with the 10 watt over here. Now this was honestly the biggest surprise for me personally in doing this testing because I came into this with a little bit of a bias thinking that this was going to be a little bit obsolete given we have these much more powerful laser modules that exist on the market. But honestly, after looking at all of these results and how they compare, I think that if you are a hobbyist, somebody buying your first laser, or somebody who wants to start a side hustle but isn't quite sure how far they'll take it yet, then I think this 10 watt module is going to be my new default recommendation. The 10 watt module can do a lot of the same stuff that the 20 watt and the 40 watt module does, albeit it does it a bit slower, but it can still get good cuts and it can still do engraves on material like I showed here today. If you were doing much thicker material, then of course you might consider one of these higher powered modules. However, with what the, the types of stuff that we were doing today, it just worked pretty well. It had less scorching than the other laser modules, not to mention that it is about half the price of the 20 watt module kit and about a third of the price of the 40 watt module kit. Plus for fine detail photo engraving, this just really stood out. I think it looked really nice when we were doing those photo engraving tests. And as I mentioned before, I think you could get the other ones to look better. However, it was easier to get the 10 watt one to look good. And so that is something to keep in mind. And I think for 580 bucks, this 10 watt module is a bit of a bargain and a good deal for somebody looking to get into laser engraving. All right, now let's talk about my trusty old 20 watt module here. And this was the one I had the hardest time figuring out when 
when comparing the results that we did here today. And I'll admit that I think I had a bit of a bias towards the 20 watt module because I have had this for about the last year and it's worked really well for helping me get my laser business started. With that said, I think I would really only recommend it to the following people. The first is probably the simplest, and that would be if you are somebody who wants to buy a diode laser, but you specifically want to buy a more done-for-you solution, then something like the Xtool S1 product, which has a built-in enclosure, might be better for you. And that particular product only comes in a, a lowest wattage of 20 watts. So there's a 20 watt version and a 40 watt version. In that case, if you're looking to save some money, then you could go for the 20 watt version, but there is no 10 watt version available in that case. The second person who I think that the 20 watt would be a good option for would be if you are all in on starting a laser business and you really wanna go for it, and you wanna get the highest amount of speed and power that you can get in a diode laser like this, but you can't yet afford the 40 watt module, then I think the 20 watt is the place where you would land. And yes, I'm sure that the 20 watt module would be appealing for some other specific situations, but for me personally in doing these tests today, those two that I just mentioned are the main ones that come to mind. And so let's go ahead and move on to the 40 watt module. Okay, I think the 40 watt module is a more compelling product in many ways than the 20 watt version, but it's obviously also more expensive. So here's who I think the 40 watt module does make sense for. Number one is anybody who already has a 10 watt or a 20 watt laser module, but is getting swamped with demand in their laser business, or perhaps is trying to do larger products or thicker materials, then in that case, upgrading to the 40 watt module might make a lot of sense. And this is actually kind of where I fall personally. I've been running this 20 watt laser for a long time, and I'm getting to the point where we're just pretty swamped in our business, up to the point where we actually had to pause new orders temporarily to try to catch up with some things. And so I'm gonna be testing out this 40 watt module to see if I can increase my speeds and processing times, and hopefully to help me catch up with demand so that we can turn those orders back on. Second is people who are just starting out but are really all in on starting their laser business and wanna be ready to scale from day one. So obviously the 40 watt module is nice because you have that power and speed that's gonna help you produce orders faster, but the nice thing about the kit from Xtool is actually that it comes included with a 10 watt module. So if you're not yet sure what product or service is going to be the first thing to hit for your laser engraving business, then it is kind of nice to also have the ability to have more fine detail engravings with that 10 watt module if that ends up being the thing that's successful for your business. And after all of that, if you're still on the fence, not sure which of these power levels that you want to get, then honestly, I would say you probably just want to go for the 10 watt. It's the least amount of risk because it costs the least amount of money and also if you start out with this to kind of learn the ropes and get going then you can always upgrade to a 20 or 40 watt module down the road and if any of this has helped you decide what power level and what laser to buy in particular and if you happen to be buying an Xtool branded laser then consider using my affiliate link which is down in the description below using that link doesn't cost you anything extra but it does give me a bit of a commission which will help fund more videos for this channel if you'd like to do so with that said thanks for watching the video this has been a really interesting one to make I hope you found it helpful and I'll see you in the next one.